And now in 2010, more women died during pregnancy in sub-Saharan Africa than anywhere else in the world. This region accounted for 56% of the 287,000 deaths recorded globally by 2021. More people will die from non-communicable diseases rather in Africa than anywhere else in the world. And a major hindrance for these problems uh, ever being eradicated in Africa is the high cost of healthcare. So let's delve into all of this. Joining us from Nairobi, JJ Fandongan, who is a Senior Vice President at Philips Africa. JJ, good to be speaking to you today. Uh, so let's just take a step Hi. back uh, because uh, you wrote a report, uh, you embarked on a report, a qualitative uh, study rather, uh, titled The Fabric of Africa Trends Report and really based on the premise that women are the thread that holds uh, African healthcare together. They're very in intricate in terms of sustaining the health of families. Uh, so what's the experience of Kenyan women when it comes to the healthcare sector? Yes, uh, what we have seen though, Samantha, is that uh, there is a uh, significant uh, uh, increase generally in terms of non-communicable diseases, as an example, and that what we're seeing is that, this, that by 2030, we see reports that uh, uh, non-communicable diseases will overtake things like HIV and malaria, and therefore there needs to be focus on this from the various healthcare systems. So specifically in Kenya, we released this report as the start of our Fabric of Africa program. Uh, we have focused on non-communicable diseases. And following from last year, where we had a lot of work with the Mathari uh, North uh, Clinic, we've uh, initiated a program with them in terms of understanding how we can use ultrasound in terms of screening for mother and child mortality reductions. Mm -hmm. So this is part of a general program that we have in Kenya at this stage. I mean, at this point in time, you're looking at a government budget when it comes to healthcare, very much focused on communicable diseases like HIV, AIDS, malaria, and tuberculosis, of course, uh, the usual suspects, one might say, in Africa. Uh, but uh, NCDs are going to become more and more of a threat uh, to, to a healthy population in Kenya and across sub-Saharan Africa. So, so how's that funding mismatch affecting uh, kind of relevant healthcare provision right now? Um, if I, from what we're seeing here in, in Kenya as an example, uh, cervical cancer and breast cancers are very high. Uh, but we see very low screening of these type of disease profiles. So the focus that needs to be is in terms of improved screening. So uh, like with the mother and child mortality, screening for cancer, screening for cardiac disorders, etc. Uh, need uh, more attention. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's about uh, the focus and priorities from the governments at this stage. Mm -hmm. So we are doing a pilot study here, as I mentioned, and this is part of a proof point that work can be done and diagnostic equipment can occur uh, in more rural type settings uh, and where we can actually have a major impact in terms of mortality of women. What about appropriate technology from a Philips perspective in terms of uh, what is needed to ensure that it's a low cost and it also it suits the environment, uh, as you say, in these more rural areas? Certainly, that's, it's a very big priority, because, uh, but, it, but it, supply of equipment is not the only item. So it's the equipment, it's the education of the practitioners, it's the service of the equipment, it's, a tra it's the uh, awareness amongst the population to go and have screening. Mm -hmm. So this pilot study is a perfect example of where it's happened. Last year when we did our first studies at this clinic, uh, we, uh, in the space of the four days of screening with uh, uh, ultrasound, we noted that uh, women wanted to have diagnosis of the status of their pregnancy. And from that and the results we saw of that, we've now initiated in a one-year study for this. Now coming out of that we've developed ultrasound that's a very appropriate for this particular type of, uh, of patient and environment and that's what we are working with here at this stage. What about training of people to use your equipment because I suppose it's not just education of those who need uh, the healthcare provision it's also a training of people uh, who deliver it um, tell us about the focus there when it comes to upskilling uh, to people in the healthcare sector. S certainly. Uh, so, in terms of the practitioners, so with the, with the clinic itself, we are undergoing education programs in terms of the processes that are meant to be uh, used. We've seen in other countries like Uganda, where uh, we worked with Imaging the World, that, uh, that generally this high-tech equipment like an ultrasound can be used in a more rural environment by, uh, by skilled nurses. 
And uh, it's about by having very clear processes in place. And in this particular example, if we, in, in Mathari, we are working with the doctors and the local uh, practitioners to ensure that they are educated in terms of use of the equipment to make sure that it's most effective. How expensive is this for a company like Philips? I mean, you're talking about not just providing uh, the right type of product, so of course there's uh, R&D that needs to go into, into that type of technology, but you're also talking about mm -hmm. educating people, you're talking about upskilling those in the healthcare sector. Is it expensive? It is expensive, but it's part of a partnership because this program is a partnership. But if we look at generally in terms of our partnerships with various governments, uh, it's not just about a supply of the equipment, you have to have the whole holistic approach. So you have to have service engineers, you have to have ongoing servicing, you have to have education of the nurses, doctors, etc. Because people do leave positions and only in doing, focusing on those areas can you actually ensure that you have high uptime of your equipment. Realistically, I, I've seen studies of the World Health Organization talking about only 50% of equipment is effective in Africa. Mm -hmm. But if you focus on the whole holistic approach, you can achieve far above 90%. And that's really what our target is. Yes. And then the, equipment, then the equipment and the entire solution really achieves the objectives originally planned. Talk to us about the role also of, of private healthcare because uh, this, as you say, very much reliant on the government buy-in to some degree. But is the private health healthcare sector uh, increasing and uh, going to play a role in delivery of, of these initiatives you're starting? We, we see a lot of support in terms of that. Uh, what we do see is that the private healthcare system in Africa is, is, is accelerating rapidly. Uh, people are investing in that and are growing. We're seeing uh, large groups moving into Africa. We also see other groups expanding, specifically in East Africa. Uh, and they are putting in high-end equipment and putting in the appropriate equipment as well. But we also see them more than willing in reaching out in a type of partnerships uh, appropriately uh, with governments. But it's obviously about uh, finding that common ground and finding a, the uh, solution.